how about this for a spot in which to tell you about the bikes and equipment that Hank and I have been using on our Himalayan expedition. I'm currently stood at the bottom of the deepest gorge on Earth. Annapurna, just up there. Dowlagiri is just up there. Now, we have just finished filming for GCM Plus and we were lucky enough to get the support from 3T and RAV to help get us over here and also supply us with their amazing kit. Now, you can watch the full film of our search for the forbidden city of Lomanthang, deep in the heart of the Himalayas, over on GCN Plus on the GCN app. Right here, though, we're going to dive into the equipment. I think we're going to start with this weapon of a bike. This is my 3T Exploro Race Max Italia, complete with this little sticker here, which frankly gives me goosebumps. Now, I have ridden 3T Exploros in some epic places over the years, the Atlas Mountains, the North Coast 500, and around my own backyard, which is not very epic, but it was COVID, and I couldn't go anywhere else. Now, over the years, 3T have added different Exploro models to the range, tweaking the tyre clearance or the geometry to change the capabilities of it, but all the while sticking to the original principle of an aerodynamic gravel bike. Now, focusing on aero too much would, I think, be doing a disservice to this bike, because it is more than an aero bike, but it's fair to say 3T's Exploro was a bit of a trendsetter. This one, though, is extra special. It's made in Italy, hence the Italia part of the name. Ollie went to visit the factory to see how it's made, and it is well worth taking a look at that video because it is not your typical carbon fiber bike. So in addition to areas of the frame that are made with layers of carbon prepreg placed in a mold, large sections of this bike are made with a process called filament winding, which is where carbon fibers knitted together into tube shapes effectively. Now I've also got to draw your attention to the stem on here. So as I'm filming this I've got my hands on a pre-production version of a new integrated stem. The stem and the handlebars remain two pieces though. The handlebars I'm using are 3T's Aero Gaia model, which as the name suggests, have an aero top section, but then are flared at the drops. So I've got 42 centimeter wide bars at the hoods, but then they're nearly 50 centimeters on the drops for added control when the going gets gnarly. The clever bit though is that the levers stay vertical so they still feel right in your hands. The bars only flare below them. Now, before I leave the frame completely, just got to point out that it is covered liberally with frame tape at the minute. That's this kind of like slightly uh, raised section here. Now that was my addition so that rattling bar bags and frame bags don't basically mark my pristine frame. As you can see, I've got 40 millimeter wide tires on these 3T Discus 45 to 40 limited wheels. And they are, quite frankly, the widest gravel wheels I have ever used. And so these tires plump up beautifully on them. Like their tube sections, 3T have gone wide with these rims. Thinking being that you choose your tires based on the width that you want for the conditions that you're riding in. But then in order to be able to make a wider tire more aerodynamic, everything else has to be wider too. Hence why you have a wide rim and a wide frame as well. So the wheels are 29 millimeters wide internally, which is vast. They are then 40 millimeters wide externally and 45 millimeters deep. And they're also hooked in case you were wondering. Now the hubs are also particularly noteworthy, carbon tie hubs with an all-in system weight of 1,665 grams. Those 40 millimeter wide tires that I was talking about are Pirelli's Cinturato tires, the M model, which is pretty aggressive. Given the distances we've been covering, a faster rolling tread pattern might have been good, but also given how extreme it's been, the added security you get from that extra grip has been welcome because the penalty for getting things wrong has been quite big. Let's put it that way. Also worth noting, we've been running super low pressures. I couldn't tell you exactly how low because we're bike packing and I don't have a pressure gauge, but I'd guess probably about 20 to 25 PSI. And that's because the roads have been so rough, we've been doing everything we can to smooth them out. 
hence why we're running extra low pressures. The group set, as you can clearly see, is Shimano GRX. It's the DI2 version, running it two by with 4831 chain rings and an 11 to 34 cassette. And we have used every single one of those gears. Now I'm also using Shimano XT mountain bike pedals on here. And the last two points to mention, I've got a Wahoo Element Roam fitted up front. Interestingly, because the mapping isn't as up to date in these parts, because the roads change on a seasonal basis, there were times when we knew our destination, but it was having to do quite a bit of rerouting on the fly. And I've also got a Seller San Marco saddle up there as well. Now, let's talk clothing, shall we? As I said, we've been lucky enough to get support from Rab for this trip. They are not super well known in cycling circles yet, but they're a legendary outdoor brand with their roots firmly in climbing and mountaineering. In fact, they are no stranger to the Himalayas. So I can imagine that their clothes have been used to summit 8,000 meter peaks countless times. They are familiar with fast and light outdoor pursuits as well though, trail running and the like, and they've now turned their attention to cycling as well with a brand new range called the Cinder Range, of which, these trousers are one part of it. These are their cinder crank pants. We've also been wearing their cinder crank shorts as well. And inside we've got their Lycra cinder cargo shorts. We've been riding in a Synchrino zip tee, which is a mixture of synthetic and merino fibers and keeping us warm on the bike in the Ridgeline jacket. We've also had to rely on these an awful lot as well though. So this is one of their cinder water jackets. This is their kinetic jacket. And actually we've had their kinetic trousers as well, which is a new thing for me, riding in waterproof trousers, but it's been absolutely brilliant. In fact, riding in baggy trousers full stop has been a bit of a departure for me and Hank, but I think we've both really appreciated it, particularly where we've been. Now, one of the best things about bikepacking in the pool is that you don't need to take too much stuff with you in terms of food or a tent because you're never far from an amazing tea house. However, one of the challenges has been extremes of temperature. We've been riding in everything from 38 degrees centigrade right down to minus five. So we've looked heavily laden because our bags have effectively been full of clothes, trying to keep warm and trying to keep dry. So within this as well, in addition to this fleece that I've been wearing quite a lot, we also have had these amazing zero G down jackets. So it packs down to almost nothing, weighs just 300 grams, but has been keeping us very, very cozy indeed. And by the way, it's ethical down as well, I should point out. Rab take their ethics very seriously. Now, if we're quiet, we might also get to see one of their sleeping bags in use. Here, you can see Hank is currently modeling their ultralight mythic sleeping bag, <clears throat> which can keep him cozy down to minus seven. Super light, super compact, perfect for bikepacking. We've also had for this trip, the slightly bigger Ascent Pro 800, which will keep us warm down to minus 15. It's gonna be exceedingly useful as we'll be going up even higher for a second film we're making for GCM Plus. In the frame bag, I've had a pretty comprehensive toolkit, all the food that I need for the day, plus hand sanitizer and also emergency loo roll, which I haven't needed in case you're wondering. So that pretty much, I think, takes you through everything. Hank, hello mate. Have you got anything to add? Mm. One really nice thing was being able to wear the clothes on and off the bike. And I think one of my favorite features actually is being able to wear a waterproof jacket hood over helmet. We got to, well, you know, 4,500 meters, huh? Yeah. When it was really cold. I mean, you got cold. I did get pretty cold, yeah. It's <laughs> got to be said. Like we said earlier, thank you so much to 3T and Rab for their support on making this trip happen. It's been an absolute corker, hasn't it? Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. If you like it, make sure you go check out the GCM Plus documentary.